workflow when you're working in any digital audio workstation. Um, it's the single most important thing that you can learn to improve your workflow. Uh, it's going to allow you to edit precisely and quickly. It's going to allow you to change parameters um, effectively. It's going to essentially speed up the process, the, the actual time it takes you to have an idea to create what you thought and actually make it real. Whether you assign your own key commands or you use the, the ones that they, they come with. For instance, in, in this one, when you call up any menu here, it's going to display down the side what the actual key commands are. Um, and it's amazing how many people don't use any key commands. Uh, and if even if you learn them on, um, say, one program, the chances of them being similar to another one are quite large over the basic things like uh, copying. For instance, if you want to copy a track or a part, then if we select Command and C, that will copy, and Command and V will paste. This will be the same whether you're working with word processors or digital audio workstations. Some programs like Pro Tools will force you to use their key commands. There's no way to actually change them. Uh, if this happens, then you're just going to have to learn theirs. But if you're working across several different platforms and one of them doesn't allow you to change it, it's probably best to learn that one and then impose those commands on all the other sequencers that you might happen to be working with. Uh, if you work solely with one, not an issue, but I have found the more you get into using your key commands, the easier it is to jump onto other platforms. I would advise setting them up, and the way I would go about doing that is try and think about what you actually do when you're working. Let your workflow tell you what it is you need to do if you find yourself editing lots of things, then work out how to chop things. For instance, if we select an area here, say I wanted to chop across my whole sequence here, I could do it in several ways. One way would be to draw, drag my mouse across all the parts I want to edit, highlight them. I could then go and select the scissor tools. Split there. And that's one way of making a chop across those selected tracks. Now, I wanted to chop everything, so I had to drag across everything. Now, as your sequences get larger and expand, and they can be beyond one screen's worth, that actually becomes a bit of a risk because you have to make absolutely certain you're dragging across everything. If you undo that, a quicker way of doing it is to select everything, Command A. I have a tool set up so that wherever my cursor is, my playhead cursor is, I use the backslash. It's got a slash, it's like a cutting. And it's the same thing. Now what's happened there is it guarantees that I've selected everything, even if my sequence was much, much larger, it would have selected everything. I wouldn't have had to drag across it and wait for the wait for logic to kind of move with my cursor. And it, it, it cuts down the number of steps, so it's a very kind of it becomes very very quick and instinctive. So you can just end up going at that. And if you need another cut later on, it's the same thing. And to do the same job by going into menus and either selecting cut or selecting a an actual tool for your cursor, it's going to take about twice to three times as long. And although that doesn't seem like a really a big deal. And when you're starting out, it, it, it doesn't really matter so much. But as you progress, you'll find that these things will become the bottlenecks in your workflow, the bottlenecks in your, your kind of production. One of the biggest things in terms of what, once you actually have your parts, is, is, is arranging them and editing them. If you wanted to, say, copy a sequence, say, within a, a part of your song, you realise that there's a section that's just too long. You want to be. You're going to want to take a part out of it. Again, if you were to do this in the way I've seen most people when they start out doing it, of dragging across, selecting all the parts that you want, and then going to select a scissor tool, cut 
button. And then they select all the parts that they want out. And then they'll obviously want to join these two parts up unless you want a huge gap in your saw. And then they have to drag all the way to the end. Reselect the pointer tool. Oh, and see, I've already pressed on the screen, so I've lost my selection. So I have to go back and do that. And then come back and drag it across. So, nothing wrong with that, but it, as you see, I mean, I'm, I clicked on the screen, I lost my selection, it took a bit of time, and it's the kind of thing that if, for instance, I'd accidentally not selected one little element of it, everything else would have moved, that would be out of time. So you're going to have a part of the song in a different part that it shouldn't be. A quicker way, using key commands, would be to select everything. Now, I've got my loop selector up at the top. And I have a key command set up to cut anything within that that's selected. So suddenly that is cut. Now in cutting it, it also selects it. So we just hit delete. And in bringing everything back here, I've got another command if you have on my system, it's shift and F for everything following. The more you can kind of semantically link your key commands, so command, you know, shift F, shift following, at the backslash for a cut. The more you can have these things make sense, the easier it's going to be for you to remember them when you're, when you're kind of devising your own if you don't want to adopt ones that the manufacturers have kind of imposed on you. So we've got that, everything selected from, and by doing that I know that absolutely everything after that point is selecting. I don't have to go and drag it and check. And I want to move it all back to here. Well, I've got a key command to move everything selected to play it. So that just moves like that, super quick. Uh, and it automatically removes all doubt that you haven't correctly selected something later on because you're not dragging across the scenario.